Let's do this. Hello, sir. Welcome to what you have I got to... Excuse my lack of enthusiasm. Drawing 15. Drawing 15, you say? Yes, that's the amount of times I've done this video and restarted it. And I'd rather sit on a razor blade and then jump into a bath of vinegar than do this again. Right, let's do this, let's do this. So we're doing styles, drawing styles and standards. Uh, the previous video to this one was uh, a video on how to create your own title block, which inevitably spawned the uh, the question, what about styles? And I was like, yeah, you had to ask, didn't you? You had to ask. But it's necessary, I suppose. We need to do this, we need to do this. Right, I'll, I'll pick myself up, I'll pick myself up. And Autodesk, if you're watching this, right? Seriously, seriously, does it need to be this complicated? Really, though? Really? Right. Like, okay, let's do it. If you've no idea what I'm talking about, styles and standards are... It's a, it's, a, it's a group of settings which dictate the appearance of your drawing. Throughout the course of the video, I'm going to probably be coming across a number of different pieces of terminology which all explain the same thing. Style library, styles editor, style and standards editor, and the design data folder are all the same thing. They're all one and the same and if you've never actually seen them before you need to be in a drawing to see them so let's just shut this down let's 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 go to drawing 16 because why not you go to the manage tab on the ribbon bar then you go to styles editor all right and then this sort of console window here this is your style manager right this is the area where you would change settings which then ultimately changes the way your drawing appears different things like layer thicknesses border thickness you can change that and it'll change the thickness of the layer that the borders on for example dimension styles you can change you know arrowheads and precision decimal places and stuff like that it's all controlled from within this styles and standard editor seems simple enough doesn't it it, it does it does seem simple enough but that's when it ends that's where the simplicity comes to an abrupt stop so why is it so complicated? Well, the reason it's so complicated is because it's because of the way you can control the global style manager, right? So, okay, right, okay, okay, okay. Let's, let's take it, let's peg it back a little bit. The best way to think about the styles and standards within Inventor is to make a comparison to Dropbox. Dropbox has, the, it's, a, it's a cloud storage solution is Dropbox, right? It's got this synchronization thing going on. You'd have a you have a Dropbox folder on your computer and you would create a file and you'll put it in your Dropbox folder on your computer. Dropbox will then synchronize that file to the Dropbox servers. So when you open up another computer, your laptop for example, uh, and you open up Dropbox, it'll synchronize that file from Dropbox to your laptop. So you can work on your files anywhere you, in the world no matter what PC you're on. If you change the file on your laptop, it'll then sync the changes up to Dropbox. Then when you open up that file on another computer, it'll sync the changes to that other computer. So you've got this sync thing going on. That's kind of how the style library works. That's the simplest way I can kind of explain it. And that's what we're looking at here. So whenever you open up a drawing, right, you've got a drawing, any drawing will do. You go to the styles editor. What you're looking at here are the local styles in that drawing, which as a direct comparison would be the local files on your PC in Dropbox. So if you make a change to this style, anything in here, let's, let's just, just, just do it. Let's see it working, right? So we will go to, we will go to layers and I'll go to border and I will change the border thickness to 0 0.004. So it's a visible change. Let's save that and click done. Now you can clearly see that the the layers change, it's went much thinner. So I'm going to save this and I'm going to say this DWG has a thin border layer and I'll save that. I'll shut the drawing down, open it back up, it's still thin. I've changed that style only in this drawing, right? The difference between the style manager and inventor in Dropbox is that there isn't an automatic sync. You might be thinking, well, I'm still not following, I'm still not following. Right, well, let's just start a new drawing. Not opening up that other drawing, starting a new drawing. 
look at the layer it's thick again that's because my style manager which is kind of it's in direct comparison is the dropbox service that sync hasn't occurred i changed that layer thickness in that drawing but my style manager the global styles still has the old thickness in it so if i go to manage and styles editor and then let's go to the layers again and then border that's still saying 0 0.028 because i didn't upload that change from my temp from that other drawing to the style manager and that's where all of the confusion comes in with inventors styles people change their styles they change everything in their drawings they'll open up a drawing they'll go to the styles editor they'll change everything to how they want it to be but it only changes it in that one drawing the next time they do a drawing it's all back to the way it was and it's like oh my god am I, I have to do it all again i have to do that every single time i start a drawing what if you want to change every layer what if you want to change your dimension styles your text styles your fonts your text heights your you know your, your everything your parts list tables I have to do that every time I start a drawing? Well, if you don't understand how it works, then yes, you would. But there is a way of syncing it like you would do with Dropbox, and that's kind of where I'm going with this. Okay, right, that's the I guess that's the simplest way I can explain it. So how do we how do we manage styles? Well I'm coming across this, I'm I'm gonna explain this um as if you were working on your own, right? There's a number of different ways of approaching this. You could be a card manager working in an office with 30 people, or you could be a guy working in your bedroom by yourself. There's a, you would approach it slightly differently. Uh, if you are a card manager working in an office managing 30 people, then you probably, I guess, maybe don't need a YouTube video to explain how to do it. Maybe you do, maybe you're new to it, I don't know, but you would approach it in a slightly different way. Anyway, right, what I'm going to do is shut this drawing down uh, I'm going to delete that drawing just so we're back to default. My inventor session that you're looking at here, right? We're using Inventor 2016. Literally, I'm not even joking, nothing's changed in like probably since Inventor was first conceived. It's that old. This is such an old part of the program. Uh, so it doesn't matter which version you're working on, it hasn't changed. Um, but everything's default. So the location of the style manager, the templates, everything is default. And I'm working with the ANSI styles. So I'm catering to the american people here because uh, that's i guess where most people are who are watching this hi from england from london mate from london apples and pears bald beef and casual down you rocket and sabu in words to that effect so we're going to go to projects and uh, i'm working on my project here right this is a project that i've created it's just in the my documents folder uh, but all the project settings are default. So if you go to your project settings down below and go to folder options, you've got a design data folder and a templates folder. And if yours is the same as mine, which it should be because I haven't changed it and you probably haven't, it'll say design data, which is the same as the styles library, equals default, right? So it's when I'm working on this project, Inventor is referencing the style library at the default location, which is C, users, blah, 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 invented 2016 design data. That's the folder containing the global style manager. So that folder there is pointing to what would otherwise be my Dropbox cloud account. That's the, the kind of global parent style library, which is controlling all the styles in all the new drawings. All the styles in all the new drawings are coming from this folder here. So what I'm gonna do is take a copy of this folder and put it into my project file. Because what I don't want to do is change the settings and all the styles that Inventor installs by default, because you can't undo it. So it's best to just take a copy of it. So we're going to go to that folder, which is, uh, if I, no, I'm going to have to browse to it. C, users, public, documents, Autodesk, Inventor, there it is, design data. This folder here is my Dropbox account. This is the global style library. This is where everything's stored. Whenever I make a change and I sync it up to the global one, these are the files that change. But you don't change these directly. You never, never need to ever edit these files directly. You do it through Inventor. So we're going to take the design data folder and the templates folder just to be safe. Right click, copy, and then we're going to go to documents, the project folder, which is Inventor, my project folder, and then paste them into there. Right, Inventor's not looking at those yet, it's still looking at the default folder. So what you do is, whilst you've got your project ticked and selected, go to the design data folder, right click on that, and then edit, 
browse and then browse to documents inventor template pro video project and then design data there you go do the same for templates right click edit browse documents inventor yada 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 templates okay and then save right now we're looking at our copied version of the style library and our copied template so we can do whatever we want and it won't change inventors standard style library which is off somewhere else you can have as many copies of the style library as you want and you can have different projects pointing to different style libraries it, you can do that if you want to but we'll not go there we'll not go there okay let's click done and we now need to change in fact, no, let's let's take it back a step. How do we do that? How do we work this like Dropbox? How do I change the settings in a drawing and then upload those changes so that all my other drawings use the same layers and the same styles and stuff like that? How do I do that? Right, well, the first thing you've got to do is go to the projects, select your project, and where it says use style library equals, you want to right-click on that, and then you want to change that to read-write. That means that you can now change the style library. When that's set to read only, you can't sync changes up to the style library. And there's a reason for that. I'll come to that in a bit. But you click save, click done. And then the next thing you want to do is open up your template that you start drawings from. So you want to go to open, you want to browse to your templates folder, and then open up your whatever template it is that you use, standard DWG, standard IDW, whichever one it is that you use. Click open, and then you now start changing everything to look how you want it to look. You can actually do this in a drawing you've already created if you want to, but if you do want those changes to always be from, you know, your template, from your starting point, then you need, it's best to do it in the template itself. So go to uh, manage, go to styles editor, and then you start changing everything in here. So, for example, the border, you want your border to be slightly thinner. You can go to 0 0.04. Uh, the title, that would be this the layer that controls this region down here. You can change that to 0 0.04 you know, if you want to change all the other things. What I can't do in this video is go over every single setting in here because that would take literally a day to do. And I, I, nobody wants to sit through a video that long. So we'll save that. Uh, other things you can do is change, like, text height so go to the text uh, styles uh, note text uh, change the font I don't know Arial or something I mean I don't know I'm, I don't know what I'm nothing planned here let's just save that click done and that'll change any fonts that are using that text style to uh, Arial uh, but you can see the layers have changed yeah that layer has changed let's just do another visual change let's make sure we can actually see something going on here let's go to uh layers the border and let's change that color to red and let's uh save that done and you can see that's changed that to red right again right all that's done has ch that's just changed those styles in this template it hasn't updated the global style manager yet so if i was to save this even though I've changed my template. If I start a new drawing from this template, you're going to get a conflict. And you may have seen this message quite often. When you click new and then start a new drawing, you're going to get this prompt. And it's going to say, there's a difference between the styles in your template to what's in the style manager. That's what this means. The styles in the style manager is the border still black, the border still thick, but the template is red and it's thin saying there's a conflict there you didn't upload you didn't sync the changes from your template in your style manager there's conflict and by default inventor will always say that the style manager is the boss so when i click ok it's going to overwrite the red and the thin lines with what the style manager saying the styles should be because the idea is your style manager is the umbrella boss it controls everything. It's the only way it can work, really. You've got a single point of contact for all your styles. That's your style manager. And if there's a conflict, the style manager rules because your CAD manager needs to be able to change and override your settings to make things standard. It's no good having 30 people in an office working with 30 different sets of styles. No, you need one 
global area where your styles are stored, and that's your style manager. That's your styles library that we were just that we've just copied. So that's the boss, and that's overwritten what's in the template. So how do we how do we actually fix that? How do we make sure that we use these settings that I that I want to to use in all my drones in the future? Well, what you do, let's open up the template again, uh, standard.dwg. When you open that up, it's Opening a drawing is different to starting a new drawing. Opening a drawing, it'll always use the local copy of the styles, but it, it still knows there's a conflict. It knows that your style library has got a different version of that layer. It, this, it knows the style library is black and it's thick. But because this is an existing drawing, it won't go and change it. The last thing you want is to open up a drawing from 10 years ago and for it to suddenly completely change in appearance because the style manager has changed in the last 10 years. So there's a reason why it doesn't automatically update old drawings, but new drawings, the style manager will always be boss. Right, how do I upload these changes into the style library so this is the standard moving forward? Well, what you do is you go to the Manage tab on the Ribbon Barn and Vendor, and then you save the styles to the style library. Invent will then run a comparison and it's saying, right, well, actually, these things are all different. And quite frequently, this is where it starts to get really awkward and complicated. Quite frequently, you'll see things in here that you'll be like, I didn't, I can't remember changing that. I don't remember changing that. I don't even, and it doesn't tell you what's different either. It doesn't tell you that border is now red and it's a different value. It just says that this style is different. And what you do is you say, save to the library, yes to all. I am The best way to think about this is I am confident that everything that I'm looking at here should be uploaded to the style library. I'm confident that this is how I want the style library to be. So you say yes to all, click OK. It'll prompt you and it'll say, it can't be undone. That's why we created a copy of the style library. This can't be undone. Once you've published this into your global style library, you can't undo this. Yes, and then save your drawing and then shut it down. Those styles are now uploaded into the style library. So when we create a new drawing now, it's red and it's thin. That is now the style moving forward. So if we open up any old drawings, so let's say, for example, let's open up uh, models. So these are the, the sample files. I've not done anything with these. Let's open up rim.idw. So this is a drawing which was created years ago. It's part of the inventor's sample files. This is using the ANSI format. It's black and it's thick. This drawing was created ages ago, but there's now a new style. How do I impose the new styles into this drawing? My, my CAD manager has changed the, the, the fonts, he's changed the colors, he's changed the layer thicknesses. How do I push these into this drawing? Well, what you do is you've got the Manage tab and then you update the styles. Save will push changes into the style manager. Update goes the other way. It looks at the style manager and it says, what's different? And it'll go, well, actually, all of this stuff is different. Do you want to update everything in this drawing to suit what's in the style manager? Yes. And click OK. And there you go. There's your red lines coming through and there's your thin lines coming through. Anything else that's been changed in the style manager will also filter through. Textiles, parts list tables, leader heads, arrow heads, everything will come through. Right. I think that that's the basics of it. That is the basics of how the style manager works. It's um, it's it's a lot to get your head around, but it does work at a fundamental level. It does kind of work. You will open up your template, make the changes, go to manage, and then save those changes into the style manager. Right. The style manager itself, right, I can't spend too much time on this. I think this video has gone on for long enough already, but there is a lot of things you can change in here. So, for example, the default standard. In here, this is where you start to change various different behaviors within the drawing. Like, for example, view preferences. You can change where it by default puts text when you create a view, above or below. Do you want the text to be on on a view? How do you want the, the projection type to be? Object defaults is quite an important one. Object defaults is, for example, when I create a diameter dimension, which dimension style should Inventor use? And then which layer should it put that object on? And you can change all this sort of stuff. Uh, click the pencil button, and then you can start to say, well, all right, well, when I do create a diameter dimension, I want to use the default millimeters dimension style. Those dimension styles are here.
If you want to create your own dimension style, you can right click on that and you can say create a new style. And then you can create your own dimension style and then change all of these. Once you've done that, you can then purge out any dimension styles that aren't in use. Just You don't have to, but you can do. You can just get rid of all the clutter that is in the style manager. Okay. Okay. I think... I think I've uh, I think I've covered about as much as I need to here. What I wanted to get across in this video is the the workings, the mechanics of the style manager, rather than how each of the styles work individually. Um, and hopefully I've got that across. Uh, I'm, I've started to lose the will to live. This is really dry. It really is. It's a boring topic, but it's one of those things that once you kind of get your head around it, you understand it. it you fumble your way through it and it sort of makes sense once you understand the sync you can change something locally and then you need to save that into the style manager once you understand that bit it kind of makes sense from then on once you've once you've done that once you're happy that you've done your style manager and you, everything's fine you've got your styles and your standards set up go back to your projects uh, folder click your project use style library change that back to read only once that's set to read only you can't upload anything more to the style manager and that's really important in a big drawing office because what you don't want to happen is have 30 people able to upload their own changes if somebody doesn't like the fact that the board is red you don't want that person to just be able to go, well i want it blue and upload that in the style manager you don't want that to happen so you, you change that to read only and then when they uh, when they work on a drawing the save button's grayed out so that's uh, it's not an option. They can't now upload anything to the style manager. What, what they can do, <laughs> what they can do though, is just go to the project file and change that to read write. But that's when you have to start using your head. You have to start look. Well, okay. Well, I'll have to put this project file in a folder and then remove everybody's rights to it, other than the CAD manager, so nobody can actually change the project file. And that's a, a different thing altogether. That's uh, that's going off into a different topic. But I think that's enough. I think that's enough literally you're you're a star if you've made it through this far yeah that rhymed uh, but hopefully it made sense uh, i'm gonna now go and take a cold shower and probably neck a bottle of vodka and i'm not gonna really but anyway thanks thanks very much if that was useful press like uh subscribe and just put a comment down below if there's anything else you want to see uh two yeah toodles